It is December 21st, 2011, on this Wednesday night edition. I'm Alex Jones. Wow, the news tonight is frightening when you realize just how crazy our society has gotten and that this has gone from the realm of speculation to be totally confirmed today. We begin with our top story this evening, and we have a Department of Defense civil servant joining us who has a high security clearance to break down uh, areas that they can discuss that are open source with us. Joe Joseph will be joining us to discuss this more in the interview segment uh, coming up after the break. But here's the InfoWars.com article, Military to Designate U.S. Citizens as Enemies During Collapse. You'll remember Halliburton subsidiary getting contracts to put Americans in camps and to man them. You'll remember uh, the Department of Defense master contract we covered earlier in the week. Well, now, listeners, i.e. Joe Joseph and others, have pointed out, hey, look at this in Department of Defense contracts. We can't tell you stuff that's classified, but look here. This is public. And in it, it talks about blue force, like our military has in Afghanistan or Iraq, against red force, the American people, and government wearing transponders everywhere else, Everybody else is basically cannon fodder, dead meat, the enemy, how the military is going to man the camps for continuity of government, collapse of society. And what's incredible is this is all on Department of Defense websites. This is all on the big public contracting sites hidden in with the hundreds of thousands of other yearly contracts. And even though we've been breaking this from open source information, Zero so-called mainstream media, dinosaur, prostitute media has picked this up. I mean, I'm in hundreds of newspapers and TV stations today. CBS, Bloomberg, you name it, for interviews we've done, news we've broken. But on this subject, it is dead. Most people freak out if they're in one newspaper. I can't even keep track of it. Infowars.com, prisonplanet.com, reach millions a day. The radio show, three million a day. My point is, there is a blackout on this. There is a blackout on this because it's continuity of government and it shows the master plan and it's got the system very, very scared. National continuity program, program and mission support services. This is the martial law control grid plan. And Aaron Dykes and I put together a detailed text report with the proof of all this, links to all of it at InfoWars.com. Please get it out to everyone you know. Again, exclusive military to designate U.S. citizens as enemies during collapse. FEMA, continuity of government plan, prep, total takeover of society, dispatching military domestically under economic collapse emergency. Unbelievable information. As Ron Paul said on my show last week, this NDAA situation, designating Americans enemies of the government and allowing our secret arrest execution should be the top story in the country. And now we have this. And the point is, they built these things a long time ago. Now they're giving them power. Now they're turning them on. Now they're manning them. Now they're activating them. White knuckle time. And for the general public who's in a zombie state, when the hammer drops, I can't imagine how they're going to behave and how they're going to act. Have a guest coming up on that and the document that you can read for now. Blue force government, good guys. American people, red force, bad guys. Of course, the bad guys are the folks that have set up FEMA and done all this to us. Classical tyranny. Continuing with some news that integrates with this, and we've got some video on it in a moment. Uh, here's other reports we broke today. Martial law attempted in Louisiana echoes Ron Paul's warning. We have CNN and local news with state reps, mayors, you name it, from multiple cities, not just New Orleans, saying, we've got some shootings and some crime. We've got a war and we've got an enemy and the National Guard who's been federalized needs to come in and patrol our streets of America. And uh, here is the other headline, Louisiana state officials call for troops on the streets, National Guard engage in door-to-door -door gun confiscation during Katrina. Never forget that that went on. And in case you have forgotten, we're going to go ahead and go to those videos now. Here's the new video from last night, just some excerpts of it, the full videos in our article. 
but uh, we can analyze some small clips here under fair use. Here are clips of the CNN reporter talking to a state rep, and this is going on in Illinois too. They've got Marines running checkpoints in the middle of California, TSA running checkpoints grabbing your daughter's genitals, your wife's breasts, your son's genitals in Tennessee. I mean, you didn't wake up in the twilight zone. You didn't wake up in the middle of the night when Outer Limits is on. This is really happening. Uh, let's go ahead and go to this excerpt of CNN clips where the solution to America's problems and the government shipping drugs in and guns out of the country to Mexico, the solution to government drug dealing and gun running that's on record is put the military on the streets. But in Katrina, they went in the wealthy high and dry areas as a beta test. They wouldn't actually fight real criminals and confiscated people's guns out of their mansions. That's coming up in a moment. But here's CNN last night. The answer to all your problems is a jolly green giant on your street. A Louisiana state official says crime in New Orleans is out of control. So much so that he is now asking that the National Guard be brought in to patrol the city's streets. And this was all sparked by the recent death of a toddler. So hit pause. Austin if it's for a toddler, why have posse commentators? Right after the government gets rid of it and says, we'll put troops on the streets, we'll secretly arrest Americans forever. You know, a toddler gets shot, hell, got to have the army. Who needs even local government? Total federalization. Who's going to protect us, though, from all the TSA robbing, stealing, and pedophiling? Who's going to protect us from the military? Again, the Pentagon has taken over the whole planet with our troops. Biggest defense budget in the world, bigger than all the others combined. 54% of world defense spending because it's offense spending. And now it's coming home to rape and rob and pillage the big juicy America. The greatest threat in history is your own military turning against you. From Rome to Mexico today, from Venezuela to what's happening in Africa, from the Middle East to Russia. But let's continue. I'm sorry. Representative Austin Badon joins me live from New Orleans. He is one of the officials who wants to bring the National Guard. I've read that you've said your city's at war. You need the National Guard. Why can't local police do the job? The local police need help. So what I have done is oh, I have called upon help. the governor to bring in the National Guard. After the storms of 2005, oh, yes. people were a lot more comfortable by seeing the National Guard on well, the stop streets right of there. New Orleans. People were a lot more comfortable. Military on your streets. When I've been in third world countries and seen troops on the streets shaking people down, and I've seen it, I, I, I didn't feel a lot safer. They feel a lot safer in Nazi Germany. We kept telling you this was coming. They got the clergy response teams all over the country, paid off preachers telling you to go along with this. Remember, it's the government caught shipping the drugs in and the guns out. Well, I'm going to shut up. Back to the clip. Higher, but we cannot allow certain individuals to carry guns and to go out and to shoot people on a daily basis in this city. So I brought. I've Stop there. The you expand on this. Yeah, he, he calls for patrolling checkpoints where the army searches you just to make sure you don't have a gun. They have a total gun ban in Mexico and 40,000 dead in the last three years. Did that help them? No, it allowed the criminals and the corrupt government to feed on everybody. Back to the clip. And five people were a lot more comfortable by seeing the National oh, yeah. Guard on the streets of New they Orleans. It. And it made the morale higher. But we cannot allow... Hit pause again. Hey, buddy, you must have been in the military. All of America isn't your barracks and you're the Sarge bossing everybody around, getting our morale up while CIA aircraft crash all the time full of cocaine. Our morale will go up if we don't have the government that works for a bunch of foreign banks robbing this country blind, getting us ready for the collapse. I mean, I know you were giving your little talking points, but give me a break, buddy. Everybody knows troops on the streets is fascism. Back to it. I've asked for the National Guard to come in and create order to assist the NOPD with support. Create order? You're another one of the big government cesspits like Chicago or New York. You people are the opposite of what America is. You're a joke. You're a disgrace. We'll defend ourselves. The first thing the military did under FBI control was rush into people in mansions with their own power and their own guns and rob the hell out of them and keep the guns. Police were robbing banks and Walmarts. It's all on record. You can't keep order because the government of Louisiana is a bunch of criminals. You want to take the whole country over now. Go back to it to take this city back because we are at war and when you're at war you have to bring in soldiers we are at urban warfare right now uh you have people who have drug let me, let me stop it again new orleans police are, are famous for running the drugs 
So some of their low-level delivery boys are killing each other, and you're upset about it, and some kids get killed in the crossfire. I mean, this is Louisiana that rivals Chicago for criminal activity. Okay, and the people of Louisiana are great folks, but the people that have taken over the government are a joke. And now you want troops on the street. I'm sorry, just go back to him. Uh, drug warrants who are out on, uh, uh, you know, warrants that they should be in jail. Decriminalize it, jackass! Operating the streets with firearms, and uh, the problem that is cut the price. permeating oh. throughout our society. So what we have to do is we have to get in there with social services. Well, you know, stop right there. So the government brings the drugs in, the big banks launder the money, society degenerates, the drug heads rob you because the drugs cost so much. It's a tax for the private banks that bring the drugs in, and their answer is it gets worse and worse, more drug use, more people in prison, is we'll just get rid of all your damn freedoms. While the army they're going to bring in publicly grows the opium in Afghanistan. So now they can make deliveries directly of the cocaine they grow in Latin America, on record, and the heroin they grow from the opium over in Afghanistan, and the troops can just bring it right in. Hell, that might bring order. Why don't we just let you government people destroy everything? Go back to him. Uh, uh, effect on a long-term problem. We have to rebuild our schools. The, lo the long-term problem is retarded jackasses so like you, punk. Back and we have to take our streets. Sorry. We are at war, and I think these people, these soldiers, could come in and help just like they did after Hurricane Katrina. Like the Redcoats you know, did. Right now, what the NOPD, New Orleans Police Department, is doing, it ain't working. So we got to do something. It ain't working. So we're the people that screwed it all up. Here's some more of the same crap. I'm sorry, does this just go on and on? Come to this city and visit this city or protect it. I mean, we had about... Yeah, yeah, yeah that, exactly. I want to visit New Orleans. You know, the last time I was in Mexico, I wanted to go see some pyramids about three years ago. And they, they would stop the bus and the army would shake down the driver and harass everybody. And, I, and my wife looked at me and she said, my mother was there on the trip with us. And they all said, I think this is our last trip to the third world. <sighs> I mean, I don't want to visit third world New, New Orleans that, 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 that the globalists have totally screwed up. I mean, I'm sorry. You need to come on New Orleans. We got the army on the street. Everything's fine. God. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Just, is there any more of this person who may be some useful idiot? I mean, we have to make sure he looks that we like protect he's dumber than a box of rocks. We come here and we also have to protect our visitors. We have a lot going on coming up in this city. We have the Super Bowl coming up. Protect our school. visitors with the Army. Hit and pause so right there. You notice these are talking points he's being given. They always have the Army of the Kentucky Derby and the Super Bowl now. It's all part of acclamations. I, I can't hear any more of it. Uh, by the way, again, when the poor people in New Orleans needed help and tried to walk out on the big bridges, they got machine gunned. We told you that first. It came out later. The police were busy robbing things everywhere. And the feds were in there killing people and then just covering it up later. And then they, they couldn't help themselves. They ran into the famous wealthy area, some of the most expensive houses in the country. Some of these things are like $15 million. I recognize from an architecture book that my mother-in-law gave me a decade ago, I recognize these buildings. And they admit in the ABC News piece, these are some of the most expensive houses in the country. Big, giant things that look like the White House. Okay, from the golden age of New Orleans 100 years ago or more. And they went into these rich people's houses, handcuffed them, and stole their guns. <laughs> so, oh yeah, man, you got a problem? They're not going to help the poor people. They're going to come in old ladies' houses and stuff and beat them up and take them, to, take them to the camp where they get gang raped by the criminals. And that happened at the Superdome, remember. So this is what government wants. It wants to set precedents to rob you because we have a kleptocracy like all these other countries. You think we're any different than any other nation? You get rid of the Bill of Rights and Constitution, folks. You're Mexico. You're North Korea. You're Russia. Let's go ahead and go, in case you forgot how they want to help you with the troops in New Orleans. Here it is. Today in New Orleans, they got a lot tougher on the holdouts. Police Department, you're Not only the flooded areas, but New Orleans' driest and wealthiest neighborhoods, too. Police the police and National Guard going street by street, house to house. We need to make sure, too, that uh, whenever we knock on doors, people refuse to leave. We need to make note, call it in. They pause say right there. there. No orders to use. They start with this make note, call it in, then it's like, then you got to pull triggers on Americans, then you got to kill them. He's like, yeah, then you got to kill Americans. And we've got the clip of the, this is from Police State, uh, 
for the rise of freedom. We have clips of the police chief saying all the guns will be taken, everybody will be armed. Again, these are clips of this. Uh, let's continue. But they, again, they start the PSYOP with make notes at the houses. Next is people in handcuffs. Here it is. They say there are no orders to use force, just strong persuasion, sometimes entering open houses with guns drawn and instructions to disarm anyone inside. Let's stop. There's no force. They tell the troops when there's no force, you're going to punch an old lady in the face and make her leave her house and her dogs die. There's no force. We're, at the end, we're going to shoot people. They're like, okay, there's no force. I'm just killing people. I mean, again, it's all like these weird little mind games they've learned to train people when you're not conscious. We're going to go around and confiscate guns. That, that's, that's no force. They're like, oh, yeah, that's no force. Well, well, hell, it's all right for us to do this. Then it's no force. Back to the clip. Guns, guns will be taken. No one will be able to be armed. We yes, will sir. take all yes, weapons. Sir. No. That happened today in this wealthy neighborhood where homeowners had armed themselves to protect their mansions. I hit pause. Hey, the cops aren't here in the military to help you protect your mansion. And my point is, if they can do this to rich people, they can do it to anybody. Oh, we're not going to help folks down there in the bad wards. Our cops are down there robbing banks right now on record and, and, and in pawn shops. No, uh, uh, we're here to rob you. That's what they were doing. And then the, the military would arrest you, and then the cops would come in and steal you blind. This is on record. <laughs> I mean, the U.S. Army, regular Army and National Guard, comes in, and then the police and the feds loot your butt. Oh, it only happens in the third world. No, folks, it happens everywhere. Only America was different. We were never perfect. And now that hedge of protection's gone. So you might as well just bend over, I guess, because there's nothing America won't take. Let's go back to it. Here they come. Here we come to get some goods. In the end, police took their weapons but let them stay in their home. Oh, nice. They were a little bit threatened because our weapons were bigger than their weapons. For many of the police and guard troops, it is an uncomfortable job to do to this in an yeah. American city. This guard unit be a sack of crap. A church, I mean, using it as a base camp. They had to leave a note because they could not get hold of the pastor to get permission. Oh. It, is, it is surreal. Yeah, you just never, you never expect to do this in your own country. Chris Montgomery says he'd rather be in Iraq than patrolling American neighborhoods. Walking up and down these streets, you don't, you don't want to think about the stuff that you're gonna have to do. If somebody pops around the corner. Let me shoot an American. Yeah. By the way, the reporter that put together that propaganda piece got his face blown off in Iraq. Uh, about a month later, so um, you reap what you sow, pal. You know what the reward of traitors is, don't you? <sighs> oh, I'm sorry, it wasn't just brown Iraqis getting blown up, was it? <laughs> One of you little precious snake men. And then you shoot an American. Oh, God, it's so good. Yeah. All right, those that live by the sword, well, you know how they die. And I feel sorry for these people, but I studied that reporter quite snake-like. And there's a bunch of other reports. I mean, we didn't even have the one where the old woman, they come and they say, we're going to take you with us. She says, oh, I have plenty of food. I got a generator, got dogs. Over here, I got my little gun. I'm fine. And they just go like, boom. It's like, you're not going anywhere, baby. You're going to a rape camp. We got, we got sewage running and gang members everywhere. We're going to throw you in there. And your dogs are going to starve to death here. We're going to loot your house. <laughs> Because there's no, and I talked to emergency personnel that were there. That's how I knew about them killing citizens with their families trying to walk out on the bridges. Because it was all a big beta test, a big laboratory like Waco. And I talked to people, and I talked to folks who said that if women and children needed help, the troops and the police would say, Let me see your breast. And they said, You want to ride out of here? Get on behind the shed. Can you imagine women needing help? And, and, and you're out there and you're like, Well, let me have sex with you. I mean, what the hell? Maybe this country deserves to be destroyed. Maybe, I mean, you know, I mean, it, it is just it's like pulling over to some woman who's got her, her car on fire. And you're like, I'll help you out here. Bend over first. I mean, I mean, wh wh who are these people? Where does this come into things? I mean, what happened? Uh, I talked to the people and it came out. They did this. They would demand sex from women. To help, I mean, number one, who wants some woman who's been in the mud for three days and who wants to force it? I mean, they're demons, ladies and gentlemen. They're demons. And then they got Dudley Do-Rights going, it's surreal. We shoot Americans. Ooh. I talked to emergency responders like Charles and others that were calling me before it ever happened. He just goes by Charles. I know his last name. 
And he said, I can't believe it. I can't believe this big. He said like half of them were having sex with women and robbing people. And the other half were going, it's surreal. I follow orders. What I do? I mean, and the good guys, the good guys just sit there and go, you ought not be raping her. You're not a good guy. You're going along with it. People are like, you're so exceptional standing up against this. What? It's called self-preservation. You read a history book? The stuff coming down here is cancer. I keep saying it, folks. There's no, there's no getting out of it going along with it. You understand? It's the worst of the worst are in control. The sky's the limit. They like screwed up stuff. They don't want a normal world like we do. They're not like us. You figure that out yet? Like the guy they catch with dead bodies in his basement? They're not like us. Well, why'd he do that? Because they're not like us. Why'd Hitler do that? Because he isn't like us. Stop being idiots. Stop being dumbasses. Stop being naive, okay? All right, I, I got to hurry here. <sighs> Look at this, the Daily Beast, which is a, even a Newsweek propaganda outfit. Local cops ready for war with Homeland Security funded military weapons. A decade of billions in spending in the name of Homeland Security has armed local police departments. Well, yeah, they've been federalized with military-style equipment and a new commando mentality, but has it gone too far? They always like, oh, has it gone too far? Oh, yeah, you're going to find out when they take everything you got out of your bank account. They're going to take what the cops got. They don't care. Kissinger calls military men dumb animals. All I can tell the cops is don't drink the water and don't take those vaccines. <laughs> you know what's good for you. Okay, continuing here. Alarm as Dutch lab creates highly contagious killer flu. I remember six years ago... A Australian lab created a human pox that can be developed in weeks by even low-tech laboratories that will kill 99% of any mammal it's designed for. And I love how this one is like, oh, you got government-funded groups, they've developed a bird flu that's super deadly and will kill millions of people. But they don't want the ingredients, you know, how to make it uh, released to the public, which is pure bull. That way when all this stuff gets released and the globalists go in their bunkers, which is their plan in their own words, you know, if you're a cop watching or FBI, instead of just saying this guy's crazy, go look up Club of Rome. Go look up Dr. Pianca at UT. Go look up Peter Singer. Go look up what they say, the UN. Once the world government's in place, folks, and they shut the economy off to get us all dependent on government and put in martial law, then they start releasing plagues that get successively worse, and they get more control out of each one, just like a banker bailout, until they kill 80 to 90% of us. I mean, I know that's crazy because, you see, truth is stranger than fiction. I'm not the one that says they're going to do all this. Let me tell you, I wish they didn't follow through on their promises. That's what's so horrifying. Every day I come in, everything I've said is confirmed. It's not like, oh, great, I'm proven right. Oh, God, our listenership's exploding. I'm like, holy mackerel, our listenership's exploding. That makes me a bigger target. Holy mackerel, it's all coming true. I wish I was wrong. This isn't a game. It's not entertainment. It's not fun. It's the real world, folks. <sighs> But we're a testament to what really happened. Now, hopefully we turn this around. It's not too late. Here's another one. USS Scientific Journal to censor bird flu studies. Uh, that's out of The Guardian. We got those reports. And then we've got this little report here. And then a uh, big final uh, finale uh, that uh, one of our great researchers has put together, the Al-Qaeda timeline to illustrate that all this terror is fake. Missile parts accuse victim of U.S. entrapment extradition appeal. This is out of the London Guardian, biggest paper in England and Europe. And they admit here that the federal government contacted him and set him up to ship batteries to somebody so they can then connect it to missiles and claim that there's basically white Al-Qaeda. Let me show you this article. He admits arranging the shipment of batteries from the U.S. and the Netherlands in 06, a deal he said made him profit of $500 but insist he had no idea as to their final destination and was the victim of a sting. And you ship some batteries, they just call them missiles. I mean, that's how these people operate. Now let me get to this final piece of news where we come back with our guest with, with more on tonight's top story. Al Ciaeta. Now I asked the crew to put together a timeline, and quite frankly, uh, Marcos put together, our great graphics guy, put one together uh, bigger than I would have even done, but, but, but still small if you go through all the evidence. I mean, it would take hours uh, to go through the connections with Al-Qaeda and the CIA and Israeli and uh, British and Pakistani intelligence as well as Saudi Arabian, which are all, quote, you know, allies in the fight against terror. 
It's not saying there aren't real Muslim terrorists or groups or, or Hezbollah out of Iran that launches some attacks. That's Shiite separate the, 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 from the Saudi Arabian Al-Qaeda group. But our media knows the public doesn't pay attention, so they say Saudi Arabia, you know, is an Al-Qaeda, uh, but Iran is when they're Shiite, the arch enemies of the group. But if you look at the history of Al-Qaeda, who set it up? Zbigniew Brzezinski's written two books about it, the National Security Advisor in 79. And if you look at this whole process of the underwear bomber being put on the plane by the government on record and Al-Qaeda being used against the Serbs, the Russians, being brought into Libya, it's amazing. So we'll start going to this timeline here while I narrate it. Uh, early on, you've, I mean, Hitler helped set up the first Muslim brigades. And then the West, when they took over the Middle East after World War II, they just took control of those. Uh, but it was reported uh, by London Guardian, uh, Jones Report, many other publications in the last decade uh, that Osama bin Laden uh, met with National Security Advisor Zbigniew Brzezinski when he was admittedly the main liaison to the Mujahideen for the United States. Other governments had other liaisons. Uh, and, and General Hamid Ghul, who headed up Pakistani intelligence, he talked about meeting bin Laden uh, in some of those operations on my radio show. So that's the first part of the timeline. Uh, right there, the fact that Al-Qaeda is set up by the CIA, and Al-Qaeda means the CIA base. There's another one. Uh, that's by uh, the former top secretary uh, in the British government, uh, Robin Cook, who resigned and died shortly after, saying the lies about WMDs were evil. He said throughout the 1980s, Osama bin Laden was armed by the CIA and funded by the Saudis to wage jihad against the Russian occupiers of Afghanistan. Al-Qaeda literally means the database, was originally the computer file for thousands of Mujahideen, he was killed by this, Robin, Robin Cook was off for bringing this out, who were recruited and trained with the help of the CIA to defeat the Russians inexplicably and with disastrous consequences, it never appears to have occurred to Washington that once Russia was out of the way, Bin Laden's organization would turn its attention to the West. Well, it was done so they could take our liberties here and launch the wars. When you're a global banking cartel and want to take America's rights, you have trillions to yourself and no-bid contracts and invade all these countries, you stage an attack. Kids understand episode three, Revenge of the Sith. Palpatine attacks himself to take control. Hitler blows up his own Reichstag. Our own government attacks its own ships to blame it on North Vietnam. So we've got uh, that report. Uh, here's another one. Alleged trainer of 9-11 hijackers, a CIA informant. So was the 7-7 boss. Turned out to be, uh, turned out to be MI6, British uh, intelligence. There's just countless examples of this. And then shifting gears more into the future. Remember, Kurt Haskell came on our show first and said he saw the government get, get the underwear bomber on the plane two Christmases ago, uh, almost two years ago. And then later on C-SPAN, the government's, the, the Undersecretary of State had to admit, yeah, they were ordered to get him on the plane to, uh, by the CIA, basically. The State Department did indeed put Mutalib on the plane at the behest of an unnamed U.S. agency. Later, we turned out to be CIA. And then, of course, the CIA tells Congress Al-Qaeda to attack in three to six months, CIA boss Leon Panetta told Congress today that homegrown extremists working with Al-Qaeda, we'll cover that next, will strike America within three to six months. That didn't happen. The recruits will be clean and have no trace to phantom terrorist organizations, according to Panetta and other intelligence groups. That means cut out black ops who will then blame a patsy that looks similar to them. That's how the standard paradigm works. And then, of course, we were told the biggest story of 2011 uh, voted by Newsweek and others is the killing of Osama bin Laden, even though they released fake photos and claimed they buried him at sea, uh, even though they claimed they had videos while Obama watched him being killed. Turned out that was fake. All of it was completely fake and has been proven to be a manifest fraud. And I've had high level CIA people contact me off record and say, yes, it's completely fake. Continuing, uh, Iran has now been accused of Al Qaeda's secret deal by U.S. officials. And they've had a federal judge claim that 9-11 was carried out by Iran. Well, wait, I thought it was Iraq that turned out it was a fraud. Or never look at Saudi Arabia with 15 of the 20 hijackers or 15 of the 19. No, it's Iran, and we've got to attack them. And they just caught, got caught with that whole fake report of the used car salesman trying to attack uh, the Saudi uh, embassy 
uh, in D.C. Just, just, just more manufactured garbage. But something they hope you don't remember is that Amor al it was in Fox News last year, and InfoWars also reported on it, radical U.S.-born cleric Amor al killed. Uh, they claim that they killed him, and I predicted that would happen just a few months after it came out. Show the next slide, please. Uh, that Fox News... No, it's, 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 it's the middle one right there. That's yeah, fine. Leave all this in. It's fine. Exclusive. Al-Qaeda leader died at the Pentagon just months after 9-11 with the Secretary of the Army. While he was on the news as number three in Al-Qaeda most wanted, there he is. And it turns out he runs the underwear bomber, the Times Square, Major Hassan, these useful idiots. He actually works for the globalist and is setting all of this up. Good job, guys, showing that information. And then, of course, we have this final article. Thanks to Obama, the Al-Qaeda flag is now flying high and proud over Libya. And the Daily Mail reported on that. We have links in this American Dream article. You can follow those links. And Al-Qaeda has been put in charge there, and now they're sending Al-Qaeda into Syria. Al-Qaeda is the secret globalist cutout black side, dark side army, black op army. Uh, that they use. So let's back it up to the front because it looks a lot better like Marcos originally made it and play that whole timeline from front to back uh, as I uh, close things out here. So again, Al-Qaeda, the continued army uh, of the New World Order taking action. Uh, here's another one. Free Syria Army now led by NATO Libyan Al-Qaeda commander. Uh, that's also being reported. So this is where we stand. They have these manufactured armies. And when a good old boy says, we've got to have the army on the streets to fight al-Qaeda, ask him why in all the manuals it's about conservatives, libertarians, gun owners, liber uh, people that support freedom in the Constitution, Ron Paul supporters. Ask him why none of it has to do with al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda is just the backdrop so the criminal banks that run our military and our government have a pretext to use that system against the American people. That's what's going on. That's what's happening, and that's what we face as a society. And I know we're heavy on news, heavy on information here. I'm not some idiot reading off a teleprompter or some info babe acting like I'm in love with you looking at the camera that you think is looking in your eyes. I'm a real person who studies this and understands it, and I want to turn it around because I want to be free, and I want my children to be free. We're going to go to break. We're going to come back with our guest who I was telling him, don't go public with your name. And he said, no, now's the time to do it. And he works in the Department of Defense as a federal employee uh, in Space Command, you name it. So that is coming up after this break, dealing with the fact that in these FEMA documents, not only does the military run the camps, they're the blue guys, the good guys, the American people are the red. Al-Qaeda is listed as red, and uh, the government listed as blue. Same thing in Afghanistan with the Taliban. We've always known this. I've been to the drills and seen it, but this is the public force structure from official government websites. This is the plan, hidden in plain view. This is extremely newsworthy. We'll be right back. It's InfoWars Nightly News. Don't forget, we've got the 15-day free trial reinstituted. It was so popular. If you're watching this later on the web somewhere else, want to support real, hard-hitting news and information. And folks, we are risking our lives, our honor, our sacred honor, our families, our treasure, everything. We need your support now more than ever. And you can get a 15-day free trial at prisonplanet.tv right now or get 44% off on a year. We're going to come back with this breaking news straight ahead. Thank you for f funding the truly alternative media. What's up with these sorry politicians? Lots of bark. When it's showtime, whimpering like little shih tzus. You want big cuts. Ron Paul's been screaming it for years. Budget crisis, no problem. Got a trillion bucks year one. That's trillion with a T. Department of Education, gone. Interior, energy, HUD, commerce, gone. Later, bureaucrats. That's how Ron Paul rolls. Want to drain the swamp? Ron Paul. Do it. I'm Ron Paul, and I approve this message. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sign Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there. Wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens. 
It's all there. Infowars.com. At the beginning of this broadcast tonight, I broke down the latest information concerning the activation of continuity of government in this country at a level we have not seen since the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962. In this case, the entire architecture of the COG system is pointed at legitimate constitutional government, the states, the governors, the general public. You see drones being activated against rural communities in North Dakota uh, for cows on their property. You see uh, state reps and governors calling for military to be on the streets of Illinois and Louisiana. It's all happening right now because the world economy is preparing to implode. It's all part of an organized program that we warned you about 12, 13 years ago when they got rid of Glass-Steagall to sell derivatives of the planet get the planet to tie into that fraudulent debt and then implode the legitimate governments of this uh, world and uh, fold them into a private corporate banking cartel system that the uh, technocrats and the kleptocrats call the New World Order. Now, you'll know that uh, two weeks ago, we were sent by state employees uh, documents that were public, but, but, but no one had pointed them out with Kellogg, Brown and Root uh, who'd been given the contracts, according to Wall Street Journal in 2006, the contracts to build giant FEMA camps for emergencies across America. Then uh, we got new documents a few weeks ago that they were now getting on 72-hour notice local teams ready of subcontractors to man them on a 72-hour notice or three-day notice. Then expanding from that point, uh, we received more documents that the Department of Defense was involved uh, and that uh, FEMA was basically orchestrating the entire operation. Then today, a frequent caller uh, who gets through on the radio, uh, Angie, uh, in the Carolinas called, and I talked to her off air, and she said, no, you know, my husband uh, you know, works for the Department of Defense. You know, that's why we keep pointing this stuff out to you. This is on the official federal government websites for contractors. And you, and you need to understand, it's, it's got blue group designations. I went, wait, I've been to urban warfare operations. It's blue and red. In Afghanistan, it's blue and red. Now, they were transponders. He's like, that's right. Here's the document. I'm emailing it to you. It's public. And we went and pulled it up. And sure enough, I recognized everything in there from the drills I've been to. First one was in 1999. And the Marines even let us in there in Oakland to their situation area in a big tent. And it had the red group fighting the blue group who were the malicious. And then I went in where they were doing interrogations of, 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 of actors who were playing the part of U.S. citizens. And they would ask, uh, where'd you get uh, the weapons? And uh, later the Marines freaked out that I was able to get this footage and we were threatened. We were told, well, this was classified. You shouldn't have seen it. And it's in my film, Police State 2000. The Sunshine Project here in Texas got documents through Foyer where the Marines are training with uh, drones and helicopters with pilots with, with opiate knockout gases in plans to knock out whole cities during insurrection. And uh, you can pull this up. The Sunshine Project was threatened, and the government said, you know, remove that or we'll come after you. It was accidentally declassified. I mean, this is the type of stuff I learned, and I'm like, we got to warn people. Now, that said, we went ahead and talked to Angie off air, and then she, I talked to her husband, and, and I, I was telling him, sir, you know, we probably don't want to use your name because you work as a civil servant, a uh, you know, former Navy veteran, uh, in the Department of Defense in some pretty highly classified areas, and he didn't get into any of that with us. And he said, no, I want to have my name public. This country is in so much trouble that uh, this stuff's all public. It's just you don't, people don't, don't know where to look, uh, that I'm going to go ahead and use my full name, and I'm going to go ahead and speak out here, because America's all on the line right now. I mean, this is really creepy stuff when they're openly passing the NDAA, saying they'll arrest U.S. citizens. It was on the news today. They're saying they'll kill U.S. citizens if they want. Obama says he'll kill U.S. citizens in America. In fact, that was on C-SPAN a few nights ago. We've got that video. It's overwhelming what's happening. And now all over the news, they're saying use the military on the streets to protect the American people. They're selling us on this. The TSA is now running checkpoints on highways. 
This is classical martial law, as Ron Paul said last Tuesday on my radio show. The NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, is martial law. So uh, Joe Joseph uh, works for the Department of Defense uh, in some very highly classified areas and uh, with space and naval warfare, but we'll leave it at that because that's all he can say. And uh, he basically wants to warn the public about what's open intelligence of what's happening. And he also told me off air, and he's going to repeat it, a lot of people in the military and Defense Department are awake. These are good people, by and large. That's why 70-plus percent of all donations to Republicans and to Obama in this race and the last are to Ron Paul. Because they know Ron Paul's telling the truth. They know. Uh, they had a Bloomberg article two weeks ago, a headline, pay this man money so he can fire you. Was the, was the joke headline, because he says he'll cut government. The people in government realize, you've got to get rid of this cancer. They'd rather be homeless than let this tyranny go through. So joining us is Joe Joseph, Department of Defense, civil servant, uh, to uh, break down the National Continuity Program, NCP program, mission support activities, uh, which is unprecedented. We have our article that is uh, at Infowars.com that just went up minutes ago, uh, going through all of this that I'll give you the title of uh, right now. It's military to designate U.S. citizens as enemies during collapse. FEMA continuity of government plan, prep, total takeover of society, dispatching military uh, domestically under economic collapse emergency. And that's what's so important. We are designated the exact same way uh, combatants in Afghanistan or Iraq are or Libya. Uh, Joe Joseph, again, thank you for joining us over the phone. Well, I'm glad to be here, Alex. Well, I've talked enough at the start of the show and in your intro. This is complex subject matter. Why are you going public? What can you tell the people that's open source? Well, <clears throat> as a civil servant, you know, you, everybody takes an oath, no matter what level of uh, service that you provide to the country. And th it's the same oath that the president takes all the way down to active duty military. And when you take that oath to support and defend the Constitution, you're supposed to take it seriously, I guess you could say. So with that said, it's my duty to provide the people who are my boss with information to make them aware because, you know, an informed public can really make a difference, but they have to, they have to do something. They can't sit on their hands and, and just sit there and let this stuff happen. And that's going on for far too long. So hopefully by giving this information out, we can raise some awareness and get people angry. And that's really what needs to happen. I mean, people need to get angry. We need to see civil uh, disobedience. You know, you don't have to consent. Silence is consent in the eyes of the law. And that's the biggest thing that people need to understand. Don't be silent anymore. It's time to speak out. You know, you, you brought up Ron Paul. Ron Paul is probably the last best hope we have right now to, to turn things around. He's it. And that's why, like you said, active duty military is the largest contributor to his campaign. Out of all the other candidates combined, he gets more than they do. So it's, it's, very, it's very important that we, that we take the time now so that our children don't end up having, I, I can't even imagine the world that they're going to live in, considering what we deal with now. Well, it's a world, Joe, where Corzine can take a billion plus dollars and be caught in perjury, and he isn't even going to get in trouble. Absolutely. You know, we, we live, the rule of law doesn't apply anymore. Now we, it's the rule of men. And we need to reinstitute the rule of law. And the only way to do that and people, we have the power. The people have the power in this country. The powers that be, this elitist cabal that runs things, and they do, the special interest, they pull the puppet strings of our non-representing representatives. They're the ones that put up this smoke screen to have you think you don't have the power. But it's your labor that funds all of these efforts, all of these illegal wars and everything else. And you have the power, each and every person listening to this show tonight has the power to change things. And that's, that's why I'm here, is because 
I feel compelled, I feel duty bound to educate people and give them the knowledge, arm them with the knowledge to be able to fight back. Well said, Joe. Now we've got in front of us what your wife directed us to. Yes. Um, you know, there with your family in the background today and you're home from work now and can cover it. <laughs> Statement of uh, work, Federal Emergency Management Agency, National Continuity Program. She sent us emails linking to you know, public contracts right. uh, last week and she called up this week and said, look, you got the wrong documents. Yes, Department of Defense gave out the contracts to prepare activating the FEMA camps, but this is the one that gets into the total takeover of government. And it says COG, break-ins on media, surveillance, uh, the, you know, the blue force, uh, go through this document with us. It, it's, it's a fascinating document. And first of all, just so everybody understands, <clears throat> this is all public information. This is what's called a solicitation for contract. And basically, the government has a website, fedbizops.gov, where they put out draft statements of work, and contractors will go and bid for the work. It's a very convoluted, hard to search through system, which is why things are very easy to overlook. You know, case in point, if you wanted to look up contracts, you know, you type in Department of Homeland Security, you're going to see thousands of contracts that come up. And you'd have to comb through each and every one of them to find it unless you know the key words and the key acronyms. Well, it's got 35 agencies under it. It's probably hundreds of thousands of contracts. Uh, absolutely. I mean, and like I said, and that's just, you know, that's just that's what makes it so difficult. So I can totally understand how, you know, it may have been missed or misinterpreted and it's very easy to do. You know, I, just recently I, I saw a solicitation, Department of Education, wanting 500 uh, military, uh, militarized shotguns. Really? You know, but this is all public information. So this And expanding on that, I've probably been to 20 urban warfare drills, researched this for... 14 years, 13 years or so, because I wasn't on to this the first few years on air. And when I read these documents, I understand some of it, but it's all meant to be Greek. It's all put in a military contractor parlance where the general public doesn't know what blue groups against red groups mean. Exactly right. Well, let me, let me go with this. I'm on page three of the document, and this is... There's only certain paragraphs that you really have to key in on to understand what it's all about. And it says, other efforts of the operations division, and operations division is exactly that. They oversee the operations of continuity of government. They are the contractor support with government oversight. So other efforts of the operations division includes initiatives such as Operation Rendezvous, or OPRON, Task Force Rendezvous, the development and integration of the Federal Emergency Response Official Repository System, National Security Special Event Contingency Support, Disaster Relief, and humani Humanitarian Assistance Contingency Support. And then it says additional efforts of the Operations Division include Geospatial Information System, which is like a, a tactical a battlefield um, Informate, it gives a battlefield picture. That's what I saw with the Marines with big projectors on the wall where they have the satellites real time. Yes. Where they had the transponders as blue group. The militias they were practicing fighting in California were red group. Right. And they, right. Had, they had Humvees with, with robot guns that anybody not in blue group was going to be killed. And right. this was 12 years ago. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's advanced. Uh, same concept, but the, the technology has advanced somewhat. Blue force situational awareness is what you're talking about. And in that sense, it's much like uh, for years, uh, for example, commercial aircraft have a transponder on it. And that system is called interrogation friend or foe, IFF. That's what that stands for. And basically, blue force situ situational awareness is the exact same thing that you have with commercial aircraft, military aircraft, and everything else. They have a transponder where uh, a, a signal goes out, the plane responds, and then on the operator's screen, you're going to either have like a, a circle, a square, or a triangle. And it's going to be either a circle for friendly, it's going to be a square for unknown, and a triangle for 
uh, bad guy. And, <clears throat> and so that's, that's what you have. Blue Force situational awareness is exactly that. So you, because of today's technology, I mean, a transponder can be, uh, I mean, look at RFID. Well, our cell phones have the little triangulators, so we know they've Absolutely. actually used those. And so they've got a full battlefield scope. They can tie into cameras on the street. Right. surveillance systems, satellites, drones, any of it. And so they know friend or foe. And this is talking about in continuity of government with camps, uh, having people with their transponder badges in the blue group against the red group. And the red group is the American people, I guess. Right. Well, this is the scary thing about when you talk, when you talk blue force situational awareness, the first thing that I think about when I think of that is overseas, in Afghanistan and Iraq and Libya and wherever we're waging illegal wars, that's where I envision blue force situational awareness. What I don't envision is having blue force situational awareness on our own soil because it, it's, it's almost too uh, crazy to wrap your arms around. It's just too much to, to, to understand. It's what Ron and, Paul said. NDAA is a declaration of war against the American people. It is. It, it truly is. And, you know, even if, and here's the thing that people need to understand. A lot of these uh, representatives and senators, of course, they don't read the bills. They don't do that. Same thing in government. These draft statements of work, nine times out of 10, are written by the contractor submitted back to the government and the guy there you know he's just like yeah well yeah okay i'll just pass this on through okay fine put my signature on it and out it goes so oftentimes they don't even know what's in there they just know that they get an overview okay this is there this is there this is there make sure that you guys hit this point this point and this point and then they ship it on through so if a company like halliburton who we know has ties to this elitist cabal goes and writes a statement of work, there's no telling what's in there. And that's why it's important. Oh, wow. I get it. They're actually influencing policy by the way the contracts are written. And Absolutely. the higher-ups don't even understand that. Right. Exactly right. That's, that's the thing that people don't understand is that part of the dumbing down of society, it hasn't only affected the masses. It's affected government as well. A lot of these government employees now don't even know how to write a statement of work. You know, and, and so well, look, I've been studying this particular type of thing for 13, 14 years, and I barely have a elementary understanding. And I guess right. it's part of the complexity of the world allows corruption to hide in it. Absolutely. And, uh, it, it, you know, there's another on, on this is this is extremely interesting is on page five. They, they come out with Mount Weather Emergency Operations Center. Now, I've been doing this for uh probably three or four years now. And like I said before, off air, it's because of you that I woke up and listening yeah, to your Weather's show. Yeah, Mount Weather is one of the uh, alternate uh, government heads along with uh, Colorado Springs and right. Cheyenne Mountain. I mean, they've made movies about martial law where Mount Weather runs it all. Well, exactly right. But for years and years, they denied the existence of Mount Weather. And now, all, and, and when I say that, I mean, yes, we know Mount Weather's there. And they say, yes, it's a 564-acre Department of Homeland Security facility. But what people don't understand is, yay, look, it's a deep underground military base. It's one of those, just like Cheyenne Mountain and everything else. And in this document here, they, they acknowledge it. By the way, Denver Airport's connected to Cheyenne Mountain. I've talked to the contractors, and they just go on and have the Daily Show make fun of us. It's very funny. Yeah, well, and well, there you go. See? Here's a deep underground military base right here. It's, it's, here it is, .gov. This is a .gov website. It's coming right from the horse's mouth. So they talk about the support that, that the, uh, this contractor will provide for, for Mount Weather. This is this goes hand in hand. This solicitation goes hand in hand, not only with um, S eighteen sixty seven, but it also goes along with uh, on December the eighth, the White House issued that strategic implementation plan. Yeah, let me stop you there. NDAA is it, the National Defense Authorization Act you just mentioned which they tried to say didn't affect citizens, and they admit, yeah, it does, by the way. I yeah. want you to be scared, as a uh, different senator said. You want a lawyer, ha, you're not going to get one, Graham said. Yeah. Lieberman said, well, we want to scare you. I mean, weird old men saying, I want to scare you. I want to scare citizens. It's beyond 
Twilight Zone. And then now you bring up what AP reported on two weeks ago, and we have the document up on screen here in a moment. Uh, it's this new threat assessment by the White House, and they say we're now worried about domestic groups, and executively they say an NDAA, now law, Obama hadn't signed it yet for some weird reason, but he says he is. The ND, it is quite a plunge they're taking, uh, where it says, if you're Al-Qaeda or affiliated groups, well, this document of policy says the White House decides, and that means anybody saying something that may stir people up. That's what the legalese, and I've talked to top constitutional yes. lawyers to make sure my lying eyes weren't lying. I mean, this, this is, is widening it to speech to everything, it is an off the chart announcement. So you've got the floor on the next document. We'll bring it up on screen, Joe, break it down. Yeah, it's a strategic implementation plan for empowering local partners to prevent violent extremism in the United States. And I wanna draw everybody's attention. This is page three of the document to the, the quote by President Obama. And I only wanna read the first sentence and a half because this is what's so important. It says, as a government, we are working to prevent and it says prevent, so they're not responding to, they're preventing, which is pre-crime, which is minority report. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pre-restraint on speech, on actions. It's saying your speech is going to cause the problem. Pointing out we're stealing pension funds. Pointing out we've stolen $27 trillion in bailouts. Pointing out Corzine's a crook and has $35,000 you know, you know, plate dinners per person exactly. for me. That, as Cass Sunstein, his regulations are, says he wants to arrest people who don't believe in man-made global warming. I mean, these are public papers. So, so did we find page three on that? There it is. Uh, please continue. It says, as a government, we are working to prevent all types of extremism that leads to violence, regardless of who inspires it, period. At the same time, countering Al-Qaeda's violent ideology. So when they put that period in there, they separate Al-Qaeda from homegrown extremism. That's By what the way, Obama's have. lawyers, and so did Bush's, the Fuhrer precept, have said he speaks like the Pope from the throne, ex cathedra when he says something that's law. He will launch wars without Congress. He will decide who's terrorist. He will decide who to detain for life without anyone knowing, or he will decide who to kill. All yes. these are announcements. So he's saying, if you are doing things that stir people up, you are Al-Qaeda. Absolutely right. And, and, and so what this document does, and folks, I encourage you to read this document because knowledge is power. And the, the only Obama way you can up, change yeah. things is if, if you take the knowledge and you apply it. So this document, it ties sheriffs and local law enforcement to the hip of the federal government. It takes away state sovereignty and puts the feds pretty much in charge. Which is what the threat fusion centers were set up for. Yes, this has all been decades in the making. And if there's one thing these, these elitists are, they're patient. But now they're not because they see their plan. See, the, the problem with all this is the internet was their worst enemy. They, it, was, it was something that they developed and all of a sudden, uh-oh, you know, now this information's coming out and people are starting to get hit. And to now it, they're so. admittedly saying that they want to censor the yeah, internet yes. for our own safety. SOPA, SOPA Act, absolutely right. In the name of online piracy. And what's scary about the SOPA Act is the fact that uh, anybody can go and put a copyright infringement, say you do a video on YouTube, you don't even have to be the person that made the video. And you're banned from the internet forever, and guess what, now Microsoft comes out with, we're gonna thumbprint yes. and face scan you to get online, it's an internet ID, and these global corporations can selectively enforce. The 80 inventors of the internet have gone public saying this. Even yes. Google says this. This is not your opinion. And again, don't you think though they're bum rushing, they're panicking, is only waking folks up faster? Well. That this this is I want the, everybody to understand this. You're seeing this because they fear you. You're seeing this because they know that if the American people or the world in general uh, get hip to their game in mass, that they're finished. There's nothing that they can do about this. Once the gig is up, their game is done. Their goose is cooked. So they're quaking in their boots, much like the Republican establishment right now is on an all-out assault on Ron Paul 
And regardless of what they're doing, everything they do, whether they silence, they, they, don't, they ignore him, or they attack him with that outlandish uh, racial uh, allegation from papers that were written 25 years ago that he had nothing to do with, they, they're, they're throwing the kitchen sink at him and nothing is sticking because people understand that how many times can you get sold a bill of goods? How many times do you have to hear Obama say, well, you know, when I'm elected president, I'm not going to put a single lobbyist in my, cam in my cabinet. Oh, really? I'm going to close down Guantanamo Bay. Really? I'm going to pull out our troops in 180 days. Oh, really? How many times can you get sold a bill of goods before finally you just throw your hands up? And no matter what, Everybody, you could say, yeah, I don't agree with this foreign policy. I don't agree with anything else. But if there's one thing the man is, it's consistent and honest. And even if you don't agree with this policy, vote, on, vote for him on that basis alone. Because how many politicians can you honestly say you've seen in the past 100 years that have been honest like him? I can't. I well, can't that's what's happened is the, 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 the establishment realized to control a big free market system and milk it, you don't have to invent anything. You've just got to buy all the politicians and then you've got control of the economy. And they've leveraged American wealth to take over most of the world. And then they're so greedy, they have this post-industrial plan to implode things to take it over. And uh, now everything's mounting against them. But... From all I've studied, the Queen of England, David Rockefeller, Lord Rothschild, they're at the top of the pyramid. Absolutely. They're all from a different two or three generations ago. They are not connected, even though they've got top think tank advisors. And what's scary is David Rockefeller is fading, you know, in his wheelchair. And they just think they're going to hammer down and pull through on this. And I've looked at every possible scenario. They're all hellish. But at, at the end of any of them, they aren't in charge. Right. They aren't in charge at the end of any of them. And they don't care. They're like, well, damn the torpedoes, go straight at them. This is a battle of good versus evil. When you boil it down to it, the nitty gritty, it's good versus evil. Um, you know, a guy that I have, I do, I do a radio show three nights a week, and one of my regular guests is one that comes on your show, Alfred Adisk. And we talk about this all the time, about how this really boils down to good versus evil. You know, and, and the problem is, folks, that they understand, they know that we hold the power. It's incumbent upon them. The only way that they are uh, going to have success in any of this is to keep the wool pulled over your eyes long enough for them to establish this control grid, this big Exactly. That's why they always try to trick us into waving things and treat us like children and try to scare us. And Alfred Adask is great. Now, now you have your show. A lot of people listen to it on Ryan Talk Radio. I, I, mean, I know that you, know, you usually, well, I guess you do use your name. You, I mean, how are you able to do this working with a high-level security clearance? I mean, has it gotten to that point where you're, well, I, mean, I mean, obviously you're covering stuff that's public. But, I mean, I know that a lot of people in government are awake. How many people are awake inside the system you work in? Well, I would say probably about half. And one of the reasons why I went civil service, folks, is simply this. Because you can't affect change unless you get your hands dirty, get in there, and change it. It's simple as that. You want to reduce spending within the federal government? Well, get a government job, get in there, and change it. And that was my mentality when I got into it. It was like, you know what? I'm going to get in there and I'm going to change things. I'm going to change the way people think. I'm going to make it so that the, you know, the typical dead wood federal employee that sits there all day, you know, twiddles their thumbs and collects a paycheck, I'm going to make them work. And so that's been my mentality since day one is to get in there to make change. Because at the end of the day, as a public servant, I am the vanguard. I'm just one of many, but I'm the vanguard of the taxpayer's money. Everything, one thing that you'll hear in federal government all the time, if you ever get in there, is that it ain't my money. Oh, really? It's not your money? So you have to change the thought patterns. And, and by doing that, people start to see, hey, well, wait a minute. This isn't right. And that but I think bulb. that's, I mean, t Bloomberg couldn't understand why federal employees are Ron Paul supporters, because they're awake. They get it. I mean, they understand yeah. if we keep doing this, there's no future, period. Exactly, exactly right. You know, resources are finite, and you can't keep this level of spending up 
infinitely. I mean, unless, unless you get somebody with the cojones to take an eraser to the ledger and just say, uh, oh, you know what, this is all fiat anyway. It doesn't count. Let's just start all over. But I, I don't think you're going to see that. So you have to do things a responsible way and rein in spending, which is why you, you got to do it. But, but again, the bankers, the finance oligarchs have this idea, bankrupt everybody and we'll get yes. control, but then they fried everything, but they don't care as long as they're in control. In closing, after this interview is over, other points that you wish you would have made, let's make them, and let's go back into how big this is, that they're openly building the force structure for COG around a blue-red system where trusted government, trusted contractor, military running it, military running the, the emergency camps that they'll sell is for helping the public. Things collapsed. They're not going to just come grab dissidents day one. It's going to be, well, the camps help people. The army stopped the crime in New Orleans and Chicago. All being announced. Oh, the army's coming. Big army, little army. All of this is going on, and there they are selling this program. I mean, I mean, this is a big deal now. The FEMA camps connected to the military, connected to FEMA, being activated and yes. a blue versus red force setup, which is the same thing they've used in countries that our government occupies. Exactly right. And, and one thing people need to understand <clears throat> is that there are people within the government, both military and civilian, that in that time would not turn a weapon on their own people and would not go and enforce it. But I will say this, there is a precedent. 2005, we had Katrina. And what happened down there? I truly believe that, in a way, that was a dry run of things to come. No, no. Now they're announcing this is a model for America today on CNN. This is a yes. model. We're going to put troops everywhere. The people want troops. They loved it in New Orleans. And if you look at the polls and see how Ron Paul is surging, do the people really want troops on the street? No, do of they course really they don't. Want, right. It's like saying you want a hole in the head. So you have a tremendous propaganda campaign underway against our own people, and that needs to change. So that's why I can't encourage people enough to get your information from alternative media sources like InfoWars, like Orion Talk Radio, all of that kind of stuff so that you are aware of what is really going on. Well, Without obviously, I mean, that's a good point, but... I mean, now it's all manifesting. The internet censorship, the calls yes. for arrest of citizens, it's here. There's no more time to live in denial. People shouldn't, shouldn't see this information and take it for granted. It's now time for banner hangs on highways. Right. It's now time to call and talk radio. It's time to go visit your mayor, your police chief. I mean, let me tell you, four years ago, the awesome police chief would laugh at me in person. Now, behind the scenes, he gets me by the arm and says, well, I can't even say what he said. <laughs> but I mean, you know, let me tell you, they're, they're being told stuff that's really waking them up now. Yeah. And well, that's the thing is that there's no, there's no veil of secrecy. No, this is slitting America's throat. Yeah. You got to decide what side you're on. You're with these foreign banks that think they're going to march the military and police out against the people, or you're with America. There's no more time to play games. Don't be hot or cold, you know? It, it will make the decision. Be hot or cold, but don't be lukewarm. You know, don't sit on the fence. And that's the thing. And I, I truly believe that that thought process in the United States is there simply because people still have too much to lose. When they look at it at the end of the day, they say, man, I really disagree with what's going but on. But you're going to lose everything. That's the trick. That's They're going to lose everything if you don't stand against them. Absolutely. But they still, at the end of the day, think, well, you know, maybe if we wait it out, things will go back to the way they are. Well, guess what, folks? It's not going back to the way it was. It's simple as that. The days of, of the white picket fence and the nice house and everything like that, it's over. So now it's time to take our country back and save the republic. And the only way that that happens is if everybody collectively, regardless of race, of income, of all that, take all the divisive ta tactics, the left, the right paradigm, all that false divisive tactics that they employ against you, See through it, band together, and let's beat this thing. I agree with you. Let's go back to the DOD in closing. What is it like? Because that's about the number I've gotten from every expert and what I've seen. About half are awake in some degree. The other yes. half tend to get more clingy and are, are like, arrest everyone, and it's wonderful. And, well, I'm not bad, so let them arrest other citizens. The others are like good Nazis, good commies. They'll do whatever they're told. 
or can we wake them up? I mean, what is it like to have half the DOD awake and the other half just ready to, to do whatever they're told, ship grandma off to a FEMA camp if she doesn't suck Obama's boots? Well, I, I, would, I would say that that's a little too general. Let's just say half are awake. They know what's going on. They're just kind of afraid. 25% just don't care. They're just like, hey, man, you know, NFL's on on Sunday. Woohoo! All right. Then the other 25% are gung ho, any Muslim, you know, 9 11, that's the way it was. That's the way, the, you know, the government commission. Well, yeah, no, no, they'll say, we're taking an old lady's house. She's, right. uh, she's a Baptist, but. But Al Qaeda, and they just, I mean, yeah, exactly. You tell them Al Qaeda, you're like, but Al Qaeda was given control of Libya. I don't right. want to hear that. I mean, exactly. It's like a religion. Right, exactly right. So, I mean, I would say probably about a quarter of it is, is people that are just gung ho to the core. They believe everything that they say. You know, they're the good, they're the good soldier. Don't ask questions. It's like an attack dog that'll run into whatever you tell it to do. Exactly right. But, it, but all of that spawns from a lack of knowledge. And so the one thing that, that I like to do is I just start off with simple things and I show how things are just so backwards. In okay, let's stop right there. Let's say you're sitting there around the coffee, coffee machine. You got a 10 minute break and I'm sitting there going, I hope we arrest every Muslim and kill them. Nuke every country over there. I, who cares? We get rid of the bill of rights as long as we rat them muzzlers out. What do you say to me? <laughs> well, I call you an ignorant buffoon. That's what I call you first. But what I would say is uh, look at all these people that work with us because it's a very diverse workforce within the government. Uh, is that person over there? You think he's out to get you? Is he that, that wolf in sheep's clothing? Do you think? Because we can go back to McCarthyism if you want. Well, then you have to explain McCarthyism because they don't know what McCarthyism is. But that's, that's the type of thing. And then you start pointing out, well, why are we spending this much for this? Why are we doing this for that? And you start breaking down how wasteful government is. And then you start going as to why is it wasteful? What are we doing? What are we getting involved in? And when you start going down into the policy of how, what we're doing, what we're getting involved in, what we're sticking our nose in, they're like, holy moly, you're right. Like, why, why in the hell did we invade Libya? Why? You know, and then you start to tell them why, and oh, there you go. The the light. What do they say when on. you bring up the fact that Al Qaeda was created by our own government? Oh, uh, yeah, I get I get a lot of backlash for it. I get, but that's the thing. And then you know, what you do they think about Fox News and Amor Al Awlaki, number three in Al Qaeda, hanging out secretly with the Secretary of uh, of the Army? Well, that's and I ask that question. You tell me why that happens, and if you can give me a legitimate answer, I would be glad. I'll take it. Sure. You just yeah, I'd love me. to hear a legitimate reason. Me too, but I've yet to find one because they can't. They just listen, <laughs> listen, Joe. I wish yes. every day it was just of some Muslim terrorist because I'm not scared of that. It's super creepy knowing that the people that run our government think they can just take a billion plus bucks out of private accounts and keep it and go on TV and say they're you know. I mean, because because the media calls me, and they go, "You just want to say it's the government because you're so scared that it could be Muslims." And, and I'm like, what and, are you talking about? Well, it's a thousand you, times scarier that our government is run by a bunch of psychos. Yeah, and how do you expect psychos to police themselves? They're not going to police themselves. All these ethics committees and everything else. Run by them. It's all, it's all BS. It's all bunk. The only way that they get policed is if we police them. The only way the Constitution has any teeth is if we give it teeth. If we don't give it teeth, the Constitution is... Is, is no, you're right. We have to animate it. Strong. It's the animating contest of liberty. Okay, in 60 seconds, Joe, we got to have you back up. Really appreciate you sending us so many things that are public. And it's like wow, and then we put it out, and it, it you know, you know, if we put out some you know moderately big piece of news, it's like in hundreds of newspapers. But anything really bombshell, like here's the FEMA camps, it's proven. Government websites, here's the contracting. Military says the American people are you know the red enemy. And then it'll, it'll get no attention, but at least on the real alternative media for now, it'll get attention. But 60 seconds, any closing comments about these documents and what this means? Well, it's simply this. Now is the time to make a stand, to draw the line in the sand. You're seeing it for yourself, folks. You got the documents here. Everything is .gov right from the horse's mouth. It's time to use these documents 
to your advantage. Read them as dry as a bone, but read them anyway and educate yourself. Look up the acronyms. Look up what this stuff means. It's all public information. Nothing is secret. This is not secret stuff. It's public on the street. And it's all available if you take the time and do the research. So a little less dancing with the stars, a little more going into this and reading about what our government is doing. And, you know, thomasloc.gov, go to the Library of Congress, look up what these bills say, and start holding our elected officials responsible for their actions. Well, you're right. I mean, I remember 12 years ago learning that U.S. Code Title 50 Chapter 32, subsection 1528, paragraph B. They later changed it because they got public attention, but the old versions are there. Shed that as long as it was research, they could kill people with chemical, biological, radiological testing. Now, we know they did all that, but the fact that they had a law to do it, it's like, whoa, you know, the level of evil. And I remember hearing a talk show host talk about that like 12, 13 years ago and stopping my car and writing it down and looking it up on the government site and going, it, it, they can kill me for no reason? Right. I mean, it just shows how the naivete of the public and the laziness and the complexity of things has brought this in on us. But the pendulum swinging back the other way. Joe, amazing interview. I'm going to end the show, and I look forward to having you and your wife as official guests back on the official big radio show. Thanks for joining us. Any Anytime, Alex, anytime. Wow. Well, you talk about pointing out uh, the uh, emperor's new clothes. You talk about the little three-year-old, you know, pointing and saying, hey, the emperor's not wearing anything from that parable. If you don't know that parable, look it up, folks. It's incredible. I have been to the urban warfare drills. I have seen it for myself. And what I haven't seen is in this slow buildup towards tyranny, this acceleration. The globalist, the bureaucrats, they are like an anthill that's been disturbed, a fire ants. They are teeming around like busy little little bees right now, or little ants, getting all this ready. And in the contracts, they're not building camps and writing manuals and getting it ready. They are getting ready to activate them. They are flipping the switches on. And to see that happening is incredible. And look at what's happening in the rest of the world. New wars, new lies about WMDs, you know, new lies for old, uh, imploding currencies, all of this and cops being completely brainwashed against the population. I mean, it's here. What Germany faced, what Russia faced, what so many other countries faced, we're now facing it. But our forebearers foresaw this and tried to warn us. We have the Second Amendment. I don't want to go there. We have the First Amendment. Let's use it right now because there is a war on for your mind, and this is an info war. I want to leave you with a clip of footage I shot on a VHS camera in 1999 in Oakland, California, as the Marines practice putting Americans in a concentration camp, in this case for protesting for food during a depression. They knew what they were going to do a long time ago. God willing, I'll see you back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central on the radio, and back tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Central, at InfoWars Nightly News. Attention, attention. American forces are here to help. Remain calm. We will not tolerate civil disobedience. Well, I think terrorism is being practiced on the residents of the city of Oakland because many of the uh, retired, in fact, retired teachers, retired military people have uh, informed me that uh, they, they understand what's going on and it's not anything that relates to humanitarian training whatsoever. This is a psychological, as we in the research community say, this is a psyops. They're preparing people for what is coming, not what is being presented today. So you're saying they're preparing people to accept it with incrementalism? That is correct, like the old frog example. You know, you put the frog in the water and you just gradually continue to raise the heat on the water until the frog is cooked. And that's the way it works. The problem is that the local people, people in general, just will not take their heads out of the sand. I'm going to tell everyone I can, listen, we have a serious problem. And it's called a police state. It's called a police state.